Good morning. Oh, you can do better than that. Good morning. That's much better. Welcome to worship at Tabernacle Congregational Church. This morning I'm going to say a very open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. And I say that for, uh, for any of you who may have missed the uh, great service that was here on Thursday night. And um, if you could have heard the crowds along the streets yesterday as our contingent walked down the street, people cheering us on. So it's, uh, it's great to have that sense and reputation here in Salem. So good to see you all this morning, those of you who could make it. Um, I was not anticipating a whole lot with the way this week has gone between the weather and activities and everything else. So it's great to see those of you who are here and on Zoom. We're glad you're here. Um, and so the only announcement I can think of uh, is to just let you know next Sunday, will be our last Sunday here in the sanctuary. And then we move up to Emerson Hall, where we can open the windows on both sides and at least get a cross breeze. So, um, so just keep that in mind. Next Sunday, last Sunday in the sanctuary, July through Labor Day, we'll be in Emerson Hall. Any other announcements this morning? Wow. I don't see either moderator asking for the, the mic. I don't see any missions folk asking for a mic. Wow. Anybody on Zoom need uh, to make an announcement this morning? I don't see any of them asking either. All right. So let us prepare for worship as we listen to the prelude. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Maybe this week will be less steamy. We have something else to pray for. A call to worship. One beloved, when sorrow and hardship abound, and events across an ocean and down the block shake our resolve and make us question what good the good news is even doing God's call to us. Open, open your heart. When fear and misinformation infiltrate our relationships and we don't know who to trust or how to do the next right thing, God calls to us. Open your heart. When joy overflows and we witness the fruit of grace all around us, transforming our lives in our communities into places of connection and flourishing. God calls to us. Open your heart. May this time of worship be for each of us a time to listen to God's call, to open our hearts and accept the divine invitation to say yes to the work of grace in us, among us, and all around us. God, we open our hearts to receive your gift of grace, knowing you hold us securely in the palm of your hands. 
that we might have the courage to live in honorable community with you and for one another. Amen. day, seeking God's presence and healing love. May God be with us as we hear the words of hope and compassion. May God give us courage to learn and grow that we might serve God faithfully all of our days as we pray our unison prayer together, saying, Holy God, we extol and honor you for who you are. We praise you for your faithfulness and for your tender mercies that are renewed every morning. We exalt you, Sovereign One, for every blessing of yesterday, the gift of this day, and the promises of our tomorrows. Grant us an enduring faith as we strive against oppression and despair. Endow us with courageous joy that lift, uplifts the downtrodden and inspires hope in you. Increase in us the faith and courage of the prophets, the love of Jesus, and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. In your majestic name we pray. Amen. God and community holy and one, gather us into your heart, 
even as we pray as we are taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Fear not, God is with us, stilling the storms, and raging fears in our lives. Place your trust in God always. Amen. you to pick up the new century hymnal go to the very back to page 778 and um, I want to uh, or actually it's 693 I'm sorry 693 in the back of your hymnal um, now if you'll notice the version that's in your hymnal is 43 verses long um, the lectionary cuts that down. So we're going to follow the lectionary this morning, not read the entire psalm. We're going to do verses 1, 2, and 3, and then we're going to skip to the next page, if you turn it over, to verses 23 through 32. And I'll mention that again when we get to that point. So we'll start out just with the first three verses. Bo's going to play the response for us. I'll sing it. You sing it with me and then we'll launch into it. Come Verses 23 through 32. Some went down to the sea in ships. They saw the deeds of God. For God commanded and raised the stormy wind. They mounted up to heaven. They went down to the depths. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. Consider the steadfast love of God. Then they cried to God in their trouble. God made the storm be still. Then they were glad because they had quiet. Let them thank God for God's steadfast love. Let them extol God in the congregation of the people. Consider
A reading of 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. As we work side by side with Creator, we are calling out for you to not let the gift of Creator's great kindness fall to the ground, for the great Spirit is speaking to you through the sacred teachings. At the right time, I heard you cry, and I set you free on the day you needed my help. Behold, now is the right time, and today is the day to be set free. We walk in a way that will make no one else stumble, so that no one has a reason to talk bad about our sacred task. Instead, we represent ourselves to others in a good way as servants of the great spirit. It is with great patience that we walk through times of trouble, suffering, and misery. We have been beaten, thrown in prison, and faced uprisings. We have worked hard, spent nights with no sleep, have gone hungry for days. We walk with clean hearts as we carry sacred knowledge with patience and kindness. We stay in step with the Holy Spirit as we walk the road of love with our hearts open for all to see. We speak the truth by the power of the Great Spirit. We fight for what is right with spiritual weapons in our right hand and in our left. We walk the road, we are honored and dishonored. Some speak evil of us, while others speak well of us. Even though we speak the truth, some say we speak with a forked tongue. We are strangers to some, but well known to others. We look as if we are dying, but look again, we live. We have been whipped and mistreated, but death has not found us. Our hearts are glad, even in times of sorrow. We may be poor, but we have made many rich. It looks as if we have nothing, but the truth is, all things are ours. You who live in village of pleasure, Corinth, we have spoken freely to you, and our hearts have been wide open. Our hearts have not been closed to you. Why have you been closed to us? I will speak to you as I would to my own children. Let us make a good trade, since our hearts are wide open to you. You should open wide your hearts to us. May God bless this reading in our understanding of the scripture. Thank you, Mark. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our salvation. Amen. Those of us who were here Thursday night for the Pride Interfaith Service heard some incredible stories. Our UCC pastor in Rockport shared what happened when his wife came out of the closet. He shared the incredible story of how their love continued despite realizing that each of them had to go on with their own separate lives to live out who they were despite huge difficulties, including his own church at that time saying, he was no longer welcomed there. 
When he protested, what have I done? The response was that he had affirmed the journey his wife was taking, so he was no longer welcome there. Last week, when I was at the National Rural Institute on Alcohol, Drugs, and Addiction, I listened as a colleague of mine shared his experience of coming out as a trans man in rural Iowa at the age of 41. 41! He had lived most of his life in agony, not knowing there even was such a thing as transgender. And to this day, at age 50, his own mother still refers to him by his female of my story, how I struggled as a young boy of faith, reading the Bible, preaching to my best friends since elementary school, how what we were doing was wrong, and yet tormented with my urges and feelings. And so I went 500 miles away to college to escape dealing with all my conflicted feelings. I ended up going to see the college psychologist who followed the best practices of those days which meant I went through three and a half years of therapy to get straightened out. I was desperate. I had even contemplated suicide before seeking help and was willing to do whatever the expert told me because homosexuality was not removed from the DSM, the book that psychologists and psychiatrists use to diagnose people. until 1973. Yes, until 1973, DSM labeled homosexuality as a disease that could be cured. This was the mid-60s, and my therapist followed what today is called conversion therapy. So I met my wife, a preacher's kid, it made a lot of sense in the religious classes that we took together. So we dated and we got married the weekend we graduated from college, where the psychologist and our director of religious studies shook hands at the wedding saying, we did it. It was another 17 years into my marriage. I went on a retreat at a place called Hazelden in Minnesota a retreat center known for its family program. And when my counselor said to me, I don't know what it is, but you seem to have a lot of shame. Can you write a letter to yourself forgiving yourself? I had no idea why, but I said, yes. And went off and wrote page after page after page in my journal coming out to myself and realizing I never should have gotten married and I needed to apologize to my wife and my children. I also knew that after 17 years as a minister in the United Methodist Church, which until this past year stated that a self-avowed practicing homosexual could not be ordained or appointed to a church, meant that once I told my bishop why I was getting a divorce, it would end my career. I spent eight agonizing months while the bishop and his cabinet discerned what to do with me. What does one do? I thought, with a Master of Divinity degree and 17 years experience, no other job. A few years ago, our area minister here for Tabernacle Church, along with our church administrator and our national office of the UCC, 
received an anonymous letter making charges about misconduct from back in those days when I was forced to leave the United Methodist Parish. As a result, I had to go through what's called a peer review, another eight agonizing months, while this group discerned if there were grounds that would cause my ordination in the United Church of Christ to be revoked. I felt terrible, not for me, but for our administrator, our moderator at that time, and the chair of our trust, our deacons, who were approached, questioned, and told they were not to tell anyone, including me, about their investigation. So I can relate today's scriptures. Psalm 107 says, God humbled their hearts with suffering. They stumbled, and there was no one to help them. Then they called to Yahweh in their trouble. And God rescued them from their sufferings, releasing them from gloom and darkness, and shattering their chains. Let them thank Yahweh for their great love, for the marvels done for all people, for breaking bronze gates open and smashing iron bars. Now I know from my 53 years of ministry that so many others in every congregation I have served have been through their own suffering and struggles. I've witnessed death of loved ones, divorces, folks recovering from childhood abuse, domestic violence, PTSD, severe depression, anxiety, all kinds of physical and mental trauma, parents and grandparents agonizing over a child. To all of them, Paul writes, it is with great patience that we walk through times of trouble, suffering, and misery. We've been beaten, thrown in prison, and faced uprisings. We have worked hard, spent nights with no sleep, and have gone hungry for days. We walk with clean hearts as we carry sacred knowledge with patience and kindness. We stay in step with the Holy Spirit as we walk the road of love with our hearts open for all to see. We speak the truth by the power of the Great Spirit. We fight for what is right with spiritual weapons in our right hand and in our left. As we walk the road, we are honored and dishonored. Some speak evil of us, while others speak well of us. Even though we speak the truth, some say we speak with a forked tongue. We are strangers to some, but well known to others. We look as if we are dying, but look again. We live. We have been whipped and mistreated, but death has not found us. Our hearts are glad even in times of sorrow. We may be poor, but we have made many rich. If looks as if we have nothing, <clears throat> but the truth is, all things are ours. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. 
There is no need to wait, says Paul. Effort can be experienced right now. Hope can be lived. Grace can be full right now. As evidence, Paul offers his own life not as a boast, but as a sign that grace is at work in him and through him. But the road has not been easy. Grace does not make life simple or comfortable. If anything, it makes it more complicated and difficult. Yet, that is where grace is made full, where life is embraced. It is in the difficulties, in the heartaches, as well as the joys and celebrations, in sorrow and in rejoicing. That grace is made manifest in individuals and the community of faith. When we rally around one another, when we enter into the hardships of another, when we endure, that grace abounds. So then, how do we activate this grace? How do we ensure that we've not accepted God's great gift of grace in vain? Paul's advice is simple and yet enormously difficult. We open our hearts. We risk loving and being vulnerable. We open ourselves to the possibility of being hurt so that we can approach the possibility of knowing joy. We reach out to connect with another person, risking being rejected so that we can also embrace the possibility of relationship. We share Christ, maybe with words as we tell our story wrapped in his story, but more often and usually first, we share Christ by how we live in relationship with neighbors and the strangers and loved ones all. That's the message of our open and affirming statement here at Tabernacle. It's why the crowd cheered yesterday as we walked in the pride parade yesterday and folks saw our welcoming banner. We rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. The grace in our lives is most full when it comes out in relationship. When we open our hearts to those around us and trust in the abundance of God's grace. Our hymn of response is Spirit of God descend upon my heart in the New Century Hymnal number 290 and on the screen for those of you on Zoom.
Gallery view, please. Those of you who are on Zoom, if you're willing to uh, let us see you on your camera, and we can all look and wave and say, the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. You may be seated in the sanctuary and we turn to that time of sharing our joys and our concerns. Seth. I have two of them and the first one is together in prayer. Lord of wind and water, of calmness and peace, be with us this day. Calm our fears as we face uncertain futures. Help us to relinquish control and to place our trust totally in you. Remind us to continue to faithfully work for good with gratitude for the many blessings you have poured upon us. When the waves and torrents threaten us, let us again turn to you. Some disciples who can calm the seas of doubt and anger bringing hope and peace. As we have brought before you situations that require help and healing mercies, remind us again that you are with each person and situation, offering your love and mercy. We thank you for the many ways in which you have healed us for all the goodness you have poured on us. We offer prayers of gratitude and love as we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of sending forth is When Peace Like a River in the New Century Hymnal number 438 and on the screen for those of you on Zoom.
share with you that in some of those dark days that I shared with you in the sermon today, it's often been this hymn that got me through. So just to share that with you. And uh, my weekly reminder that you can leave your offerings in the plate by the door, mail them into the church, use the donate button on our website, and please join us through these doors in the Bigelow Room for some refreshment following the service. Children of God, today is the day of salvation. May you go from this place carried by the grace and peace of our triune God who holds you, surrounds you, and keeps you as we learn to love God, neighbor, self, and all creation in our sorrow and in our rejoicing. Amen. Amen.